Hello and welcome. In today's video, I will be discussing about qualification of water for injection generation and distribution system. So please watch my full video. So first I will be discussing about the guideline requirements. So for the water for injection system, the US pharmacopy or USP is the first and foremost primary requirement. USP chapter 1, 2, 3, 1 defines the requirement for the water system. It defines the requirement for the all types of water starting from the tap water, then purified water, water for injection and sterile water for injection. So for the guidance requirement, USP chapter 1, 2, 3, 1 is the, is the primary. Then FDA's guide for inspection of high purity water system is also one important guideline which defines the what should be looked at when we are looking at or when we are inspecting the high purity water system such as water for injection generation and distribution system. Other important guideline is ISP on the water and pure scene systems. This guideline defines the engineering aspects of installation commissioning of the water system. Apart from this European guideline UNX1 as well as WHO has requirements specified therein about the high quality water systems. So this defines the guidance requirement. What are the acceptance criteria? So for the water for injection, the acceptance criteria as per USP, what we have to test is conductivity, which will be 1.3 microsiemens per centimeter. Then TO, total organic carbon or TOC, which will be 500 parts per billion. Apart from that, we have to go for the microbial limit, which is 10 CFE per 100 ml of water for injection, as well as endo endotoxin, which will be 0 0.25 endotoxin units per ml. So these are the specification or the requirement as per USP. Other guidelines like European Pharmacopoeia, Indian Pharmacopoeia, or Japanese Pharmacopoeia, they they'll have their own set of requirements which will be in line with the global requirements or which, which may have a certain requirements which will be stringent or certain requirement which will be not that stringent. But in general, for the US market, USP is applicable. So we have to follow the USP guideline, USP requirement for the water for injection systems. Now coming to the qualification part, I'll first like to discuss what is critical in terms of qualification, what we have to look critically for the water for injection generation and distribution system. So first is when we are defining the requirement for the installation, first and foremost that in the line there should not be dead legs which are more than the limit. So what are the defined limit? What is the allowed limit for the dead legs? So as for the USP, 6D is allowed, 6D is 6 diameter, then ISP allows 3D that is 3 diameter and WHO goes even stringent, it allows 1.5D. But in general, as per ISP, 3D is acceptable, it is, it is generally acceptable limit for the dead leg in the water system. Typically, we should not allow any dead leg. There should be zero dead leg. And what is the allowed limit is this. 3D is the allowed limit. USP allows up to 6D. WHO has a stringent requirement about 1.5D. So these are the three different requirements in terms of dead legs. But practically, there should not be any dead leg. And what is the reason why dead legs are not allowed? Because, because of the dead leg, there will be stagnant water. Stagnant water means water will not be in circulation. Stagnant water will allow microbial growth, microbial contamination and formation of biofilm. So if the biofilm is formed, then it is very difficult to remove, very difficult to neutralize, very difficult to sterilize by the routine sterilization process, routine sanitization or process of the water system. So dead legs should not be allowed into the water system and if there it should be within allowed limits not more than that that is for first requirement then second important requirement is about the velocity the velocity of the flow in the distribution pipe should be more than 1.5 meter per second 
This velocity is required to prevent any formation of biofilm and stagnant area within the distribution system. Third important point is about the welding joints. The welding joints into the water system should not have any discoloration, should not have any pinholes and should be convex and the convex when the, when we say convex the diameter the, the thickness of the convex joint should not be more than 20 percent of the tube thickness this is required so as to not allow any any curve any pinholes and any dips any any deformities within the weld joint which will eventually lead to the microbial contamination then the system should be able to undergo passivation, should be able to withstand the high temperature during the sanitization process or during the sterilization process. Uh, piping should be SS316L. One more important requirement for the water system distribution is about the slope. The pipe slope should be 1 mm in every 100 mm length. For example, for each 100 mm length, there should be 1 mm of slope. The slope is required so that to allow the uh, flow of the water to prevent the stagnancy. For example, if the slope is not downwards and upwards, then water will flow back. If the velocity is not enough, then it will it will create a pressure onto the distribution system. And if if there are certain dead legs, then it will not flow to the drain, but it will remain into the system and it will create a stagnant area within the water system. The slope is one more important requirement. After, like we have discussed important critical factors in terms of installation, about the air velocity and about the uh, weld joints, about the passivation, then system should be sanitizable at high temperatures. Now coming to the performance qualification requirement, we, I have discussed that what are the acceptance criteria in terms of chemical test. We have to do conductivity, TOC, then we have to do for the microbial limits and endotoxin. Now how to qualify? So there are three phases of qualification, phase one, phase two and phase three. So what we are basically doing in phase one, we have to sample from all the user points. So total number of user points we have to uh, list it down, define into the protocol. We have to sample from the generation point, sample from the return point, as well as sample from the all the user points. So supply, return and all the user points we have to sample. Phase one will be right, uh, uh, ranges from two to two weeks to four weeks. And what is the need or what is the reason for performing the phase one in phase one which we are determining that our water is meeting the required acceptance criteria so whatever the criteria which i have defined we have to test it for 14 days or 28 days and decide that it's meeting the criteria and during the phase one the water is not to be used for any purpose this is we have to just taste the water to understand that water is meeting the predefined acceptance criteria but that water has not to be tested for anything you are not we cannot use for any uh, purpose for which high quality water system like water for injection is required once the phase one is done and you have the satisfactory results then you can start then you have to continue with the phase two while doing the phase two, you have to do the same testing which was done in uh, phase one at the, all the sampling points. But after successful result of phase one, you can use the water during the phase two for the qualification of other systems, such as you can use water for the cleaning purposes, for cleaning uh, cleaning cycle development, and other other uses where the, you need the water. Once the phase two is completed successfully, now. Phase three we have to perform. What is the and phase three we have to perform for the entire year. And what is the reason to do the entire year? Because of the seasonal variation, there will be certain uh, changes or there can be certain impact on the water system generation and distribution system. Uh, changes into the land water, changes into the source water, and how our water system is able to deal with those changes. Any chemical changes, for example, in monsoon there will be there can be possibility of higher rate of microbial count within the source water within the land 
or from the city water from we are actually getting the water if if that is impacting and the, and the summer and the winter this seasons may have impact on the source water quality as well as performance of the performance of the water system so to understand how the seasons are impacting the our water quality we have to do the testing for the entire year for the testing of the entire year we uh, with the help of microbiology and with, with the help of quality assurance department the number of sampling points or number of the number of sample can be optimized like phase 1 you have to do the full testing phase 2 you have to do the full testing but for phase 3 you can optimize the number of sample or number of the user points and optimize the frequency to have optimal number of samples so you know you don't have to do the extensive uh, sampling throughout the year you can de decide the sampling points and sampling frequency based on the assessment and you have to perform the testing throughout the year once your entire year's testing is completed then you have to generate a report for the uh, phase 3 and then it goes like water sampling you cannot stop throughout the life cycle you have to do the water sampling so sampling will continue but the sampling num number of sampling points number of samples can be optimized based on the assessment uh, based on the assessment of the phase 1 phase 2 and phase 3 results so um, this defines the requirement for the performance qualification so i hope that my this small video is able to make you understand what are the critical factors which has to be considered during the installation qualification operational qualification and performance qualification if you have any questions just put me in comment and i will also be making more videos on this topic to make give you more clarity about how how to qualify water system so thank you thank you very much for watching my full video and if you are liking my channel just subscribe to my channel thank you thank you very much